Hey guys, welcome back to the Drone Camp Shop. Check out what I have on the bench here today. This is my friend, the MJX Bugs 3. I, I know you guys have seen this one before on the channel, but I was able to get the backpack version and I'm gonna show you that backpack here in a second. Uh, it's pretty slick. There are some things I like and I don't like about it, of course, and uh, this wouldn't be a review without some of those pros and cons. Now, I've had this on the channel before and I, I had a good time with the MJX Bugs 3. I like the way it flies. It's a quick, snappy, brushless quadcopter for uh, people wanting to move up from something starting out with a toy grade drone to something with brushless motors. Now this is still a toy grade drone, but it is way faster than some of the previous cousins like the Kaideng uh, 70, uh, also the brushed SEMA quadcopters out there. If you're familiar with those, those are way slower. Uh, and those are good to start out with. And this is a next, this is kind of a great next level quadcopter to move up to. Cool thing about this one is the fact that it is under the $200 range, uh, way under the $200 range, and you get brushless motors and the capability to actually add a GoPro on this one. So it comes with a little camera mount here that snaps open. And I put some foam up inside mine. So it just slides up inside here just like that and the clip comes over top of this little hook on the bottom and it will snap into place. This snaps back just like that and that's as easy as it gets for putting on your GoPro. Now what I also think is cool about this frame is the fact that you have optional landing gear on the bottom. You can take these landing gear off. There's just barely enough room for having this camera gimbal under there. And this is not a true gimbal. This is kind of a hard mount gimbal. So uh, there's, no, there's no brushless motors on this. It's just a point and shoot straight ahead. And I don't have any kind of FPV monitor on this one, so I can't see a real time view. Uh, so I'm just kind of flying in a general direction and hoping that I get some pretty cool scenery. Uh, but I've been doing that type of photography for years with quadcopters. Once you get used to it, it's not too bad. Um, so it's kind of a surprise when you come back and you get a really awesome shot out of it but you know generally these quads are just for playing around and you also do get prop guards in the box with the bugs 3 so if you're a beginner start out with those prop guards for the first week and then take them off after that um, when you feel like you're not going to fly into someone or yourself now you don't have to use this type of gimbal if you if you don't want to if you fly your GoPro on there and you don't like the way that the footage looks I'm going to show you an alternative way to to add a gimbal on the Bugs 3. It's pretty simple. It's the old reliable credit card gimbal. Now this is pretty easy to make if you have an old credit card or something similar to a credit card size piece of plastic. What you do is you cut it in half and then you take the two pieces and use a hole punch or something you can put a nice hole through there and run a zip tie in and out of both of the credit cards and put it together, snap the end off with some snips and you have sort of a dampened camera holder. And this works actually quite well. This is great for um, just cruising around and taking video with almost any type of quadcopter. So you might be wondering how the props go on and off. They're very simple to put on and off. They actually have a lock and unlock icon on each side of the prop and you just spin the prop one way or the other and it should come off. And the idea of these props are that they're self-tightening. So as the motor spins around, the prop should stay tight on the motor itself. So just spin this around and they actually feel really, really tight on the motor, which is great because you're not gonna have any of these props flip off or fly off during flight. Now let's take a look at the battery on the Bugs 3. It does have a pretty standardized connector on here. This is the X-T30, and it's the smaller version of the popular X-T60, which is great because you can use this on larger style chargers. And I'm just gonna slide this battery out of the rail here and show you the battery up close. Uh, what we have here is a 2S 1800 milliamp, 25C, so it's a moderately low C rating on this battery. Um, so you're gonna sort of charge this one on a lower amperage rate, um, but that'll take care of this battery over time. It's not gonna be a super high performance battery, but the quad itself is actually quite fast, so I don't really think that makes a difference, um, particularly for this quad. 
but you're going to get around 10 minutes uh, to 15 minutes flight time out of this if you're running the GoPro on there probably more like 10 minutes per battery and the battery cable just simply plugs into the back of this port right here you'll see positive and negative here and it also has a positive and negative on the side of the battery cable there so we can just plug that in make sure it's sitting flat because you do have an accelerometer in this quad. Now, when everything loads up, you should see the LEDs go solid on the bottom of the arms, and you'll see this sort of headlight in the front. This is great for learning how to fly line of sight with your MJX bugs, because uh, you definitely know where the front is. And also, you can see that at a pretty good distance with this quad. It's actually really, really bright. It's a little oversized LED on the front. And then you have your sort of a square rectangular uh, LEDs on the bottom. And these will also light up when the remote is on and everything is ready to go. So this is the transmitter that comes along with it. And it's pretty nice. It actually got way out there with this transmitter. Uh, you're supposed to be able to get at least 500 meters maximum range out of this. So that's pretty far out there for flying line of sight or if you're playing around with FPV for the first time. So uh, like I tell the new guys, keep it in close and you'll likely be able to find it because guess what? This quad doesn't have a beam so if it goes down in tall grass, you're probably not going to find it. Uh, it's going to be really hard to find. So keep it in close and uh, you, you're likely to be able to recover it. Now, this is a 2.4 transmitter, 2.4 gigahertz, and that's nice. Like I said, you have a ton of range with this. It's also set up in mode two. So you have throttle on the left here and your yaw axis right here. So that makes it spin around on the horizontal axis. And over on the right stick, we have roll and pitch forward and back there and then you have your trim buttons there and a lot of times i tell people not to mess around with these trims leave those center because a lot of times with uh, accelerometer sort of stabilized quadcopters you don't need too much trim um, especially for these type of quads now up at the top here you have your connection status led and your on and off button here now up on the very top of this transmitter, we have four more buttons uh, outside of the antenna itself. We have the unlock and lock button right here. So when you want to take off, press this button and then you can immediately start moving this throttle stick. Now be careful with this throttle stick is actually quite sensitive. So if you have your stick up a little bit and you do this, it's going to almost take off on you. Actually, it will take off on you. So be careful that you have your stick at zero all the way down when you press the red button for takeoff. And and you can slowly come up off the ground. Uh, over here on the very far left, this button is your high and low speed button. And over here on this side, we have the 3D flip button, which is gonna be this closer one in. And then the photo button is on the outside over here. So this is the backpack that comes along with this version of the Bugs 3, and it's cool that they designed a backpack for the Bugs 3. Uh, I'm going to show you some pros and cons about this backpack, uh, but let's talk about the good things first. Cool thing is that they do have a zipper across here, and if you have extra props or extra accessories you need to slide down in here, maybe you want to put your tablet down in here, it's big enough to fit some type of device or tablet in here. So uh, nice that they have that external zipper there. And it says something like T-O-K-K-Y. I don't know what brand that is, but the main zipper opens up to the main compartment of the bag. And looking inside here right away, you can see this is just regular styrofoam. Uh, and that's the one thing that I don't like about this. So manufacturers, if you're listening, definitely use a better grade styrofoam on these. Um, this is a cheaper quadcopter, but keep in mind, we're gonna have a lot of use with this, and this stuff might actually tend to flake off and just end up everywhere. Um, so we wanna use a better, maybe like EPP or something, uh, but EPP is gonna be more expensive to produce, I understand that. But the cool thing is, guys, that you can take this out, and this is removable, so if you wanted to get that pull away foam you can make up your own compartments with that you can go and put that in here as well so uh, you could do that if you if you want to because this does pull back to reveal the styrofoam and you can get it out quite easily now the other thing that i'm not super excited about is the fact that this doesn't go in there with the taller landing gear on there uh, you have to take those off that's why a lot of times i just put one screw really tightly on the quad and the quad fits in there now it's not going to fit in there either with the props on so you'll have to take the props off as well but spend a couple minutes take the landing gear off and uh, remove your props and you're you're good to go there so let's flip it over and there's also another compartment on the back back here and it's a little zipper here 
sort of lets you get into that. And also, I like the fact that this is vented padding back here. So if you are hiking on a day trip or something, uh, you're not going to get super hot with this on your back. A lot of new style backpacks have this vented padding uh, for better comfort. This is for the transmitter. The transmitter just slides down face first in there, just like that. You also have five extra slots back here for more accessories. Uh, maybe you can squeeze some uh, extra batteries in here. And you could also mod this and, and add a couple more compartments in there if you wanted to. So that's enough for this overview of the Bugs 3 backpack version. Let's go outside and let's see some video footage of what the GoPro Hero 3 Black looks like mounted on this quad.